woman herself raised up. something is so interesting. When marriage comes and tell you such a pressure, you ask me how many shops are there in Bangalore, those who stitch or gum, I will tell you. Because my daughter was getting married, I myself never knew how many shops are there in Bangalore. I finished almost all the shops. But she didn't buy from all the shops. Finally, what? From one shop. <laughs> okay. So, we prepare. When the marriage comes, a lot of preparation, you know, go for wedding cards and, and the special, unique wedding card and the dress, you know. And we, we come to know the entire market, all the showrooms and everything, and the food, and people, and music, and all that is there when uh, the marriage comes, when the wedding is near. We prepare ourselves. But the Lord is telling us, you know, it, it says that the wedding of the Lamb is near. We'll read that verse again. It says that, the wedding of the Lamb is near. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him. For the marriage of the Lord, Lamb is come, and His wife hath made herself ready. Okay. Now we'll just keep that verse in our mind. And, um, you know, we give uh, order. We give orders for the endowment of the gown. We gave an order. We told, you know, the... Uh, we saw that uh, particular gown for Tabu, and we told them, take her measurement, and uh, this is this has to be like this, and the lace should be like this, and uh, the design should be like this. Everything, all the description. And all these ladies were up to that shop uh, owner, and I was sitting and watching up that. <laughs> you know, then they were so busy giving the measurement, this, that, and all. And after maybe maybe a few days, we went and picked it up. Okay. Now that just keep that in your mind, and I'll come back to that a little later. Let's go to Genesis chapter two. Oh God! Oh God is the one who is a hard worker. Oh God is a one who works. You know there are guards. We hear about some guards. They sleep and they sleep and they sleep. <laughs> Some cars have no other business, you know, all useless things they do. But look at our God, what he did. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse uh, 3, the Bible says, God blessed the, seventh, blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work. That means our God is not lazy. A God is a God who works. He works. If God works, and his people also must work. Yesterday I was listening to one RSS guy. He was talking all good things about uh, Jews. You know, how Jews came up so much in their lives. They got uh, independence in 1948, May 14th. And we got in 1947, August 15th. And you see, you can compare our country with Israel. And he was giving so many other examples. One I want to tell you. And he, this guy went and stayed in Israel with another uh, professor. And the professor, uh, he used to get up at, uh, this guy used to get up at uh, 7.30 or 8. And he used to see that the professor from uh, Israel disappeared. 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, he's not there. And he comes, he, he, both will go to the college and they give the lecture. And 4 o'clock they come. Again, five, five, from 5 to 8, that uh, professor is not there. And one day he asked him, where do you go? And he said that, see, my job is uh, 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock, I'll be working in the college. But uh, morning, 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, we will go and work in the field. We work as farmers because we are building our nation. 
And then evening, see the soldiers in, in, in Israel, almost all are soldiers because everybody has to go through that training, uh, military training. So soldiers, they work so much and they give rest in the evening and we go and do their job in the morning. Hard work. Our God is a God who works. How many of you like work? We don't. <laughs> it's terrible. It's uh, not a good question to ask. <laughs> you know, we want to eat and sleep. <laughs> you know, I was working in a company and the, the, I was giving gospel to my boss. And he said, uh, why God has made all these things? You know, so many problems. If he gives us food, you know, and we will eat and live happily. I said, he, uh, he will surely answer your prayers. I said, is that so? I said, yeah, he will surely answer with one condition. I said, you know, he will give you food on your table. Food will come and the clothes and everything will come. But he'll take away your hands. I said, why? But God has given hands for work. <laughs> you know? So he said, no, 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 I want my hands. You know, okay, the Bible says, then you see in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. The Lord gave Adam. I know this, it's amazing. These people, you know, we keep fighting. You know, this is my land, this is my land, this is my property. But you know, God will be laughing. Everything is mine, fellas. I gave it freely to you. You know, God has given. God gave Adam. Adam can easily, you know, eat fruit and eat all the herbs and everything, vegetables, everything is there. He can eat and live. But God said that you have to work. You have to take care of the garden. There is a lot of work. You start working in the garden, you see that there is so much work. But God said, work. Our God says to all his people, work. We are here to work. Yes. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter We'll quickly we'll go on with some of these verses. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I know many people that do not like work, working. They just want to sit in. You know, they say that my father has earned a lot of money. We have enough money. We will sit and eat. How many of you like to have the property of your parents? So much property. You need not work at all. Just eat, drink, sleep, travel. How many of you like? Oh, don't tell me this. <laughs> okay, I know you all like it. No, that is not life at all. That's not at all life. God says, today if you have that kind of mentality, that you know, I will have enough, and I need not work, and I'll sit and enjoy, forget, that is not life. That is a cursed life. Life is even, see, God gave all the silver, all the gold, all the diamonds, all the property to Adam, but he said, Adam, work. Yes, if God gives you everything, work. Some people say that, oh, my husband has got a good job, he has got enough money, I need not work. Of course, you work at home. That's also work. You're working, you know, the people say that, oh, woman, you see, you know, woman need not work and I go for work. Men sometimes, they think in India, you know, that, that we are going for work and my wife is, uh, you know, sitting around set at, uh, at home. No, no, she has a lot of work. That is also work. She keeps house clean. She keeps, uh, you know, vessels. She, she washes. She, she does the dishes and, you know, uh, washes clothes and, and everything prepares food. That's also work. So we are working. God wants us to work. There is such a joy and life in work. Say, I love work. I love work. Oh, so sad. <laughs> okay. Ecclesiastes this chapter 5 and uh, verses 18. Behold that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh all his labor. 
that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for it is his portion. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth, and hath gives and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, that this is what? The gift of God. The gift of God. <laughs> Work is not something boring, something of pressure. You know, work and labor, a man labors, work hard. He gets the fruit of his labor. He enjoys it. He spends it. He buys things. There is such a joy in, you know, working and getting the fruit of it and enjoying it. Somebody is enjoying someone else's fruit of labor. It's not a joy at all. You will not enjoy that. You know, I also said that my mother did not do anything for me. My father did not do anything for me. They did not keep any money for me. Okay, but God has something. He has got a gift. That is a work. We are here to work. God has called us to work. You know, not just, you know, never expect, don't even pray, Lord, give me a big money, big bank balance so that I can sit and I, I, can, I can eat. No, no. Ask God for work. Lord, give me work. When God gives you work, there is life in work that God gives to all of us. Okay, Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 4. It says, the soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Reading in Karana sister is so beautiful. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. Sluggard means a lazy man. He doesn't want to work. There are, there are millions of people in this world that don't want to work. You know, there are many drunkards, they don't want to work. Udyogiya Atma Ke Pusti. It says that, you know, the one who work, you know, but the soul of the division shall be made fat. Work. God has called us to work. Let us change our attitude. Let us change our thinking. That it will say that, I want to work. I want to work. You know, some work at all. They want to sleep. They want to eat. They want to watch TV. They think that that is life. No, that is not life at all. That kills you. You'll be cursed. You know, you don't have life. Let us work. You will learn. You will earn. You will bear fruit. The joy of the Lord will be upon you. The anointing of God will be upon you. The light of the Lord will shine upon you. Hallelujah. So I learned it. I also, once upon a time, I was longing, you know, if somebody, you know, maybe my mother or father keeps a big riches or property, you know, I will sit and enjoy and enjoy and enjoy. That is not life. God says that is not life. Life is work. If God says, Adam, work, God is telling us also, work. Okay. Then let's read some more words. So Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear, bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Read it in Canada. That's beautiful in Canada. <laughs> You know, the, read it again. The, the, the one who works hard, he will rule. The one who works now today, why Israel is ruling? Now the whole world says that Israel is so powerful. You know, in all fields, in economics and also in, in innovation, in military and also in agriculture, in all the field because they work they work. You know, I'm learning. The, after God gave me this message, I said, I, I should have heard this. You know, maybe 20 years ago, I should have worked even more. But the, the Lord wants us to work. Israel worked hard. They built the nation. 
Some people went to Japan and they came and told me that, you know, Japan is totally a different nation. They, are all, they have all sufficient because they work hard. They built the nation. But we have a mentality that somebody work and give it to me, I will enjoy. Some, maybe, maybe my parents, let them work and give it. Maybe my husband, let him work. Maybe my wife, let her work and give it. Maybe my son or daughter, work and give it to me. I want to enjoy. No, no, no. If you are children of God, you have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God gives you an urge inside to work. Work. God, whatever the work that God has given. We'll come back to that later on. Okay. Twelve. Twelve, eleven. Okay. He that tilleth his hand shall be satisfied. Land, okay. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with the bread. But that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Okay, that's also a good verse. Read uh, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. Okay, that's right. Okay, the next one. Uh, Proverbs 14.23. Sorry. Proverbs 14.23. In all labor, there is profit. In all labor, there is profit. You know, we, we were very poor. Very, very poor. I, was, I grew up in an orphanage. My father died and I grew up in an orphanage. And then uh, I came back to my house in the home in Darwar and uh, started going to college. We didn't have money. We didn't have clothes to go to, to wear, to go to college. We didn't have money at all at home. So much of poverty. And we decided to do some job typing because we started learning type, typing. We didn't know typing. We had a one old machine, typing machine. That too, we bought it. My mother bought it, you know, paying on installment. That was only 500 rupees she was paying on installment. And she got that machine. And we started slowly working at home, learning and also working. And then we worked really very hard. And we opened up a shop. And we started working. And, you know, people that were in, in our mission compound... There were so many Christians, they were laughing at us. But when they saw the profit that was coming to us, many put the board, job typing undertaken. <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> what I want to tell you is that your hard labor will yield you profit. When that money comes, that money you see that brings joy, the money that somebody earned for you will not bring joy. You worked hard. And that is, you know, you get the profit. You will rejoice in that. This is my, you know, when the money came and we gave, came to our mother, my brother and myself, we gave it to my mother. It was a joy in the house. We went to the market. We bought new clothes. We went, we started buying food. We started changing our house. Great joy because there is no guilt inside. We worked hard. It is our hard labor is yielding fruit. Don't earn by wrong means, by doing wrong. See, in, in our country, you go to any government office, you cannot get your things done without bribing. That bribing will, you know, they take that money. I don't know how they can rejoice, how they can enjoy those things, because that is not what they earned. It's bribing. You know, according to the word of God, surely the curses will be upon them. And they will, they will really reap what they have sown. Okay, so what it says in verse 23, it says, In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. Some people talk a lot. You know, their hard work is only to talk. They talk a lot. You know, suppose think that I'm doing something. Suppose think that I'm painting the building. Somebody comes and says, no, no, pastor, you have to paint like this. No, 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 pastor, you must use that color. No, no, pastor. They give one million suggestions, but they never bend their back. You know, never do one work. There are so many I have seen world that talk a lot, even at home. There are talkers. They talk a lot. They never do one work. 
even in the church I have seen, you know, they talk and they talk. When it comes to the work, you see that they're absent. They disappear. Don't just talk. Work. It may be any work. It may be work. You know, I was, we, we both were, you know, I don't know whether my wife was there in, with me in uh, Washington, D.C. We were um, uh, in the railway station, and I was uh, suddenly I started, there was a lady, she told me something, you know, I mean, to move or something, she said, and I was talking to her. She was looking like a, uh, you know, a model. Uh, she was looking so beautiful, and her hairstyle, and her clothes, and I thought some, maybe some celebrity. And I was talking to her, in just a few minutes, she started cleaning the uh, station. <laughs> I, I said, and not only that, you know, I, I, I went, I preached in one church, and the pastor said, now immediately you have to go to another place called Waltham, and you have to go there and preach. Okay, I said, yes. And this is the brother, he's going to take you. And he was so handsome, you know, nice suit, and, and he took me in his car, and I asked him, what, what do you do? You know, what work you do. I said, he smiled and he said, just you know, as we are going, you just see these beautiful buildings. And he said, yeah. And I was, uh, went on showing me so many buildings, so beautiful, nicely painted. Did you, did you like the buildings? I said, so beautiful. I said, I painted them. He said, <laughs> you know, work is no condemnation. Stealing is a condemnation. You know, these people, they, bri they take bribe. They're condemned. They're guilty. They're dirty. But, you know, we work. It may be any work. Cleaning on the road, you know, cleaning in the, in the church, cleaning at home. You know, some people, they don't wash vessels at all. They say, that, oh, no, boy. You know, washing vessel is so dirty. I don't touch and all that. No, 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 no. Any work. Work is work. There is a joy. Sing a song and wash vessels. Hallelujah. You don't smile. I know that. You don't like these kind of messages. <laughs> Psalm 90 and verse 17. Psalm 90 and verse 17. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yeah, the work of our hands establish thou it. Brothers and sisters, when you start working, when you start laboring for God, whatever the work that God has given you, don't ever say that, you know, you're... Some people think that preaching is the only the work of God. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You are doing a lot of work at home. It's a work. God has given you that work. You're taking care of the house, taking care of children. You're, you know, you're not, not only there. You come to the church and you're working. And God, it's, it's the Lord sees that work and he will establish you. He will establish in the work that you are doing. And that will yield the fruit of joy. That will yield fruit of prosperity. Hallelujah. So it is the Lord who establishes. Hallelujah. Okay. Now the Lord gives you a job. The Lord is the one who gives you the job. Preaching is not only the work of God. A lot of other things are there. Helping. You know, helping the ministry. Cooking. You know, cooking is something, it's, it's such, such a blessed thing. Some people think that, you know, some ladies, they say that, no, I have got to pray, I have got to go to church, I have got to preach, I don't cook. Because they are over spiritual. You know, they think that God will appreciate only if I go to the church and I preach or, you know, join a pastor or go visiting the houses. I have no time, I can't cook at all, I'm very busy. No, 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 cooking is also what God has given you know, I have seen some ladies, that they're really expert and very good in blessing other people, the ministers or the other people with their food. They cook so well and they feed others. Remember, if you are doing that, the Lord has given you that job and he will reward you greatly. Remember one thing. When we ask God, when we ask people, come and do this job, sometimes, they, you know, they don't like to do this job. For example, cleaning the church or maybe helping somebody in the church, you know, cleaning, you know, the parking or cleaning the toilets or whatever the work in the church, you know, maybe painting or, you know, the decoration is there. Now we start decorating. 
these are all menial jobs we think that god is not going to be bothered about that god will not reward only if i come and stand with on my suit with my suit and i sing and i preach then this is only the work, it's a work of god no never think like that you are doing something for god i tell you our god will not take any work freely he will give it back if you are coming to the church cleaning the windows and the door so some some sisters they come every saturday they come and clean the doors and some others they say that this is not my job i don't do this oh this is dirty job you are fool you are losing the blessing some pastors they came to meet me here and they were here for 3 days and they said now when we don't have any job is there any painting work any carpentry work they said they were great men of god they said that you know we want to work they're ready to work you know you just help somebody you stand with somebody any work i do because there is a joy in doing the work of the lord when you start doing the work of the lord the lord will start filling you with the anointing don't ever say that oh dirty thing i don't do that i don't take broom and clean the parking place in the church i don't put water i i don't water the plants i don't do all those things dear brothers and sisters god is watching now god will never take any work freely let's read some of the verses hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10 hebrews 6 and see our indian mentality is totally different we you know we categorize uh, and we say that we discriminate and we say that you know this is not my job i don't do all this kind of job this dirty job you know, wiping chairs and all you know helping children you know cleaning them up and somebody is in trouble help them you know we think that these are all not my job we are fools there's an opportunity that god gives you immediately to grab the opportunity and do that work god sees that and he says that even if you give a cup of water in my name you will not lose the reward he said that is christianity that is a church i preach it because even if the 10 people they receive this message and then their lives are changed i am blessed i am blessed So Hebrews chapter 6 and uh, verse 10 the Bible says as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are the household of faith let us do good to them that are that are the you know we are doing this for the glory of God we are doing it as unto the Lord okay He, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 8 Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 8 what it says knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth the small shall he receive of the lord the same shall he receive of the lord whether he is bond or free he will receive he shall receive of the lord brothers and sisters somebody came to your house you helped them you cooked you know cooking is not easy you know just you have to do a lot of things you know you have to prepare you have to buy vegetables or meat and you clean it up and and you know you serve you know it's a lot of work and you did that to somebody with joyful heart and do you remember our god has seen it he records it and he will bless it hallelujah i believe the word of god i believe god says that he worked and he wanted adam to work he wanted his children to work what work the work that god has given to us we look into the work which we are not doing and we neglect the work already god has given okay matthew chapter 19 and verse 26 quickly matthew, matthew. you know you know peter came peter and came asked us oh lord oh we lord, left we everything. left everything you know we were, you know, we were so learning well. so well You know, when we you know, were casting, we casting our nets, our nets we, were we were getting enough fish, and we were selling, we were selling it, it, and we were enjoying. And, we were enjoying. and now we and are now following, we are following you, what you want to give to us. That was, that his, was question. his question. I think, I think verse, verse 26, 26 he says, But Jesus, But Jesus beheld, beheld them, and said unto them, Man, this is impossible. Okay, then. Okay, verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. 
and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Peter is, is I really like this guy. Straight away he asked, we are following you, Lord. We left everything and we are following what you will give to us. You know, you ask him, Lord, we are working. We are doing things. You know, we come and set up the table. We come set up the music. We, we, we clean the church. You know, some, sometimes we think that those who are on the stage are rewarded more and those who are on the field, they are rewarded less. No, God will never do that. God, will know, God knows how to reward us. You know, Peter came and asked that. Then what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you. Whenever Jesus said verily, he says, you know, he's pressurizing. He says that. Truly, truly, he says, verily, verily, he says, verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Remember what work Stephen was doing. He was serving the table for the widows. You know, he was serving the table. You know, the tables come there, and some people I have seen, I'll be watching, you know, the tables, one or two will be working, rest all will be watching, you know, standing and watching. An opportunity, sir, an opportunity, quickly run and say that, shall I help you? Shall I take it? God will be watching that. God is watching. Come, come out of this Indian mentality. You know that, let somebody work. I am a boss and I am in a good uh, clothes. I will not uh, do this work. You know, don't, don't do this kind. Don't have this kind of mentality. Come and join. It may be anything. Come, let us, you know, when you're working for God, whatever the work that is, uh, uh, opportunity that is given to you to work, immediately grab it and do it. It may be a menial job. It may be a big job. It may be singing. It may be dancing. It may be cleaning. It may be cooking. Whatever the work is, you just do it and you see the reward is great. God says that. You know what was reward? If you read Matthew 20, chapter 20, 25 and verse 36 onwards, Jesus says that you have given me water. You helped me when I was in prison. You gave me food. You gave me all these things. Then he said, you know what was the reward? He says, come and sit with me on the throne. Come and enjoy the blessings that I have. The blessing that the master has. We, will, we are the partakers of his blessing because we clean the church. We clean the toilets. We clean the chairs. That is the reward God is going to give us. And I believe that. And I am happy. From the day one, brothers and sisters, is my testimony, I never said no. It may be cleaning the toilet, any, any menial job in the ministry. All these years of 46 years of my life, there is not one record that I neglected an opportunity. I grabbed every opportunity and I do that. I know that my reward will be great. Hallelujah. So glory to God. Hallelujah. What else he said? Regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory. He, you also shall sit upon the twelfth throne, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brother, brethren or sisters or father, or mother, or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Okay, whatever that you have given, you know, you will receive a great, okay, Ephesians chapter 4. And verse 28, the Bible clearly says, Do not steal, but work with your hands. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28. The Bible says, Let him that, st that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor. Stop stealing. Okay, and he says, Working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Stop stealing. Work with your hands. Okay, let's continue. I've got still more verses to share with you. And also the Bible says that. Whatsoever you do, you know that verse. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, the Bible says that whatsoever you do, whether you eat or drink or do whatever, do it as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. You're cleaning toilets as unto the Lord. Don't grumble and say that, what an idiot pastor I have. He gives me this kind of job. You know, don't say that. Don't grumble. 
any work if you want to work work joyfully i will come to that okay that is first corinthian chapter 10 and verse 31 or a colossian chapter 3 and verse 17 colossian chapter 3 and verse 17 the bible says and what shall you do in the word or deed what shall you do in the word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Friends, don't say that I am something that is demonic. We are nothing. We are, we are nothing but the dust of the balance of the plate, the Bible says. We are here to do any work. You know, and the Christmas has come, the carols have come, and you know, the music and dance and skits and all that. You know, sometimes we say that, oh, that is not my job. This is not, I'm not going to do this. I do only these jobs. I only do that jobs. Never say that. Do everything, everything that comes to you. Run to it, grab it, and do it as unto the Lord. In the name of the Lord, the Bible says, you know, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17, the Bible says, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Okay. And do it with heartily. Do it heartily. Colossians chapter 3, in the same chapter, 3 and verse, three and verse 23, the Bible says, the Bible says and, what and what shall you do? Do it, do it heartily. heartily. What, do what do you do? Do it heartily. Not with a big, sullen face. Not grumbling. Not angrily. Not, you know, not, not, not hesitantly. With all your heart. You know, this is the work. Oh, boss, you want me to do? Okay, daddy, you want me to do? Mother, you want me to do? Okay, at home. You know, these days, the children, they say that, you know, they teach your children to clean the house. Teach your children to wash vessels. Teach your children to fold the bedding, you know, bed. And all these works are work. You know, some, some parents are so proud to say, my children will not do all this kind of thing. We have got 10 servants at home. The children will give them mud to eat one day. You know, they, they will make them to eat dust. No, no, that is not life at all. When God says Adam, when God, God gave Adam, was the owner of the whole world. He was the owner of the world. God says work. He tells Adam to work. You know, we are here to work. I love to work. You tell me I used to paint my house. I wash vessels. I wash. I used to wash clothes. Believe me or not, at least ten songs I composed when I washing my washing clothes. I composed songs, and the songs really become a blessing to many people. Brothers and sisters, work is work. Work is not stealing. Don't feel condemned when you are working. There is no you know, category, you know, different categories in, in work. You know, these are the great work, and these are small. All work is work for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you work, work heartily. The Bible says in the Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible says, you know, and what shall you do? Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Not unto, not as unto men. You are not working for men. You are here. You are anything that you do. See, sometimes you work for some people and they take the work from you and they kick you out. Or don't feel bad because you didn't do work for them. You work for the Lord. And the Lord knows he will never deceive you. He is not unfaithful. He will bless you for all the work that you have done. As unto him, not as unto man. Not to please pastor. Not to please your mother. Not to please your father. But you are pleasing the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The work is very important. You work, you will be so happy. You work hard. You're so happy. You will eat the fruit of it in this world only. Okay. And then we will. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. You know this verse. I used to quote this verse very often. First Corinthians chapter 15 and 58. The Bible says. Therefore my beloved brother. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor that you do for the Lord will never go in vain. 
even you just stood up and gave a chair to somebody is recorded is recorded we will be sitting and we may want someone else to do that work we are fools get up and you do that and you get the reward and i get that, that i know this truth and i do it joyfully even if i am standing i give say seat to somebody because i know that he is watching and he will reward me okay ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12 ephesians chapter 4 today i'm quoting a lot of scripture because these are very important that's why 4 and verse 12 the word for as for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ brothers and sisters anything that you do for the sake of Jesus anything that you do as unto the lord will edify the body of Christ you are encouraging the body of Christ you're building the body of Christ and the lord will be so happy you know all are sitting for food somebody you know everybody needs water and you know it and you will be waiting for someone else to do that you can is- immediately get up go and get the water serve the others and if i say that i am a pastor let somebody serve me no no i lose my reward okay okay there is an there opportunity, is an opportunity for, me to, for me to do do it do it do it do quickly. it quickly so that so you, that you will receive, receive the blessing, the blessing. For the, for the edification of the body of Christ. You know the body of Christ. You know the body of Christ that is sitting here. here. And you are and encouraging, you are encouraging somebody, somebody. Praying for somebody. Helping somebody. Helping somebody. somebody. You know cleaning, you know, cleaning the church. Helping the mother or father. Mother or father, or, or, or children, or children at, home. at home. You're working, you're working cleaning, cleaning in the house. In the house cooking, you're cooking. Doing things. Doing things all that God, God has given as unto the Lord. And I tell you. You are building the body of Christ. The body, the body of Christ, of Christ will, be will be edified. Will be will be encouraged. That's the That's reason, reason brothers and sisters, we all have, all have the Holy Spirit. If you have, if you the, have the Holy Spirit, Spirit and you are lazy, lazy the question is whether you have the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy, you know, the Holy Spirit, Spirit will take away the business from us and he'll make us to work. He will give us strength. I'll come to that. <coughs> Equipping the body of God. God is at work. Okay, read this verse. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 I can do all things through Christ Christ which strengtheneth me I can do all things friends I want to tell you even a small work that you are doing as unto the Lord even a small work that you are doing or the great work that you are doing as unto the Lord it is not only you are doing the lord himself will be doing it through you hallelujah i'm preaching i'm preaching it's a work of the lord i'm doing i'm not doing it by myself it is the lord who does it through me hallelujah any even in the cooking you know rejoice and do the cooking when you're cleaning rejoice and do that it is not only you the lord himself will be with you it will be enabling you to do that work that is christianity you work and i'll tell you you you're working as unto the lord there will be great joy there will be a great joy so it's the bible says that god himself first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 this is very beautiful you know you all know this maybe i have shared this many times first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 for we are laborers together with god you are god's husbandry you are god's building we are laborers laborers together with god that means if i'm building this church building the ministry it's not only me doing this it is the lord is doing even in your house you are doing even cleaning you're not doing it alone the lord is with you you cannot do it by yourself jesus said you can do nothing without me 
you can do nothing without me he was not mentioning only the great jobs even the menial jobs even the small jobs do it as unto the lord i tell you a new sure joy of the lord will fill you when you do it as unto the lord hallelujah it may be whatever it may be it may be cleaning or taking papers you may be serving the table serving water whatever it is run and do it and you'll see that great joy will come okay as unto the lord okay god is at work and god will test our work also our work will be tested in the same uh, first corinthian chapter 3 and verse 10 onwards we think that we have done everything as unto the lord many times we do it as unto men as unto ourselves we do it for ourselves for our glory what will happen if we do it for myself not as unto the lord if i do it if i do it for just to glorify or just to get the favor of other people you know for other people's sake for men if i'm doing that what will happen we will read that according to the grace of god which is given unto me as a wise master builder i have i have laid the foundation and another man another builder thereon but let every man take heed how he build it thereupon okay for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest every man's work will be tested you did this to get popularity you did this you know just to to please men you did this only for, you know for the sake of money you know you did not unto the lord that will be tested the bible says and what happens every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if man's work abide which he hath built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss so friends if god's fire is coming to test the labor or the work that i have done then he must have recorded everything that i have done everything that you do for the lord okay this is very important mark this word and don't forget this words jeremiah chapter 48 jeremiah 48 jeremiah 48 and verse 10 cursed be he that doeth the work of the lord deceitfully cursed and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from the blood okay he said cursed be he that doeth the work of the lord deceitfully in another words he's saying in another uh, uh, edition it says that cursed is the man who works negligently is not bother work of the lord don't care pastor has called for some work no care for your job top priority for your work top priority your housework top priority shopping top priority but you know how the work of the lord we give we neglect we don't care god is watching he said that word is very important that word is very cursed is the one, is the one who, takes who takes his job, his job negligently, negligently. negligently. This, is, this is important so brothers, so brothers and sisters, and sisters all, these, all things, these things you know, you know and the lord said something in, uh, in uh, matthew chapter 24 we'll read that you will really enjoy that matthew chapter 24 and verse matthew 24 and verse 46 24 24 and verse 46 the bible says blessed blessed is the servant who is his lord when he, when he come and shall find him find so do when, when the lord comes if you, if you are working lord will be very happy very happy 
You know, the Lord's coming, we don't know. All the signs of his coming are being fulfilled. All of them. You carefully see. You know, he's the only one who foretold all that is going to happen. I always like that words, you know, in the beginning he declared the end. That is our God. Friends, his coming is near. But he will be so happy when he comes, he sees that his servant is still working. Working for the Lord. Preaching somewhere. Helping somebody. Wiping somebody's tears. You know, giving some you know, money or clothes or something to somebody. You know, he, he's continuously doing, you know, building the church, building the families, building the youths, building the children, Sunday school children, working heartily, working joyfully for the Lord. When the Lord comes, when he sees these people, he'll be so glad. Why I said all these things, let's go back to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Quickly I'll say that and close. Revelation 19 and verse 7, the Bible says, we didn't read this fully. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. You know, the garment has to be ready. Gown has to be ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. She should wear a beautiful gown. What is that gown? Then you see, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Is the work. You know, when you're working, and in Canada it is very clear, the hard work that you do, are the fine linen garment. Fine linen gown. You want to go to heaven without the gown? You want to uh, attend the, the marriage of the lamb without the gown? What is the gown that you are going to wear? Your righteous deeds. Your deeds. You talk to somebody. You encourage somebody. You prayed for somebody. When there was work, you did not escape. You came running for the job. All these things are like a garment. You are preparing a garment for yourself with a beautiful lace, beautiful color, and beautiful design. You know, the best designer, fine linen cloth that you are preparing that are your righteous deeds. Shall we pray? Shall we all stand up and pray? Brothers and sisters, the Lord has spoken to us about the deeds, about the work. Our hard work will not go in vain. Whatever that we do as unto the Lord, we, are, we will be rewarded in this world only. You know, the world will see that, the fruit of our labor. Don't escape here after the work, work of the Lord. It may be working with children, Work heartily. Working for youth, work heartily. Working with women, work heartily. Cooking, work heartily. You're serving the table. You're not doing it as unto men. You're doing it as unto the Lord for the edification of the body of Christ. Father, we thank you and we praise you, God, for ministering to all of us. Lord, help us that we all may attend the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb with a fine linen clothes, the righteous deeds of God. We give you glory, Father, for ministering to us. In Jesus' name we pray.